Thank you, Nomad Peer to you. Today we're going to talk about a subject that's on the top of everyone's mind, and that's how do you use the fridge with the Nomad Peer to you and understand how to get the most out of your fridge when it's paired with the Nomad Peer to you. The couple things you need to look at, the Nomad Peer to you itself, if we treat this as a dumb device, it provides power uh, to anywhere that it chooses to go between 8.8 .8 and 12.6 volt. So it will cut out at 8.8 .8 volts. Uh, 100, 100 amp hour battery at 80% DOD. Depth of discharge means you've got 80 amp hour usable from the battery. Why we set it at 80%? 80% gives you more life cycles. If we set it at 100%, we'll actually go through the battery quicker and you'll be replacing them more often. So 80% DOD on 100 amp hour, you've got 80 amp hour usable, but recovery rates on lithium will give you probably 90. However, we say 80% DOD. Lead acid, AGM gel, typically you can run them down to 45% or 50%. Most people don't realize that if you run down over 50%, you're gonna have a very, very short lifespan out of your battery. And if you're running down 100% on your AGM lead acid gel, there's a very good chance you kill the battery and it won't recover at all. Very dangerous to do when you're out in the bush and you use that for powering your whole campsite. So the relationship between the Nomad and the fridge. Fridge is an interesting one. There are so many types of fridges out there and, and, and types of compressors and so on and so forth. Typically the more expensive the fridge, the better voltage range that it has or features. Um, this fridge here is probably $300 cheap fridge. I go through fridges uh, quite often because I'm extremely rough with them and I expect to get 12 or 18 months out of it. So this fridge here, it does the job for me. It cuts out and stops working when the voltage is 10.6. Now I know that because I had this for quite some time, probably six or, six or seven months, and it will cut out at 10.6 volt. There's nothing wrong with the unit here. So this will be sitting at 10.6, the fridge will now stop working. The little LED will be on, but it won't be able to kick on the compressor because it's trying to draw the current that needs to kick it on again. It will kick back in at 11 volt. So how do I get around that? Now a lot of fridges that you'll have will have a low, medium, high setting. You need to set on the low setting or set on the economical setting. Your fridge will typically have, in most cases, will have some type of battery protection, low, low voltage protection, and that will stop the fridge working to stop your battery from being uh, take it over 50%. You've got to remember that the fridge is trying to protect your battery, uh, even though the Nomad doesn't require that battery protection because we can run ours to 100% down. If they were to take that switch off and you were to borrow your friend your fridge and it didn't detect low battery, it would kill their battery and then you've got to, your friend would be blaming you for giving them a fridge that uh, killed the battery. So that's the reason you have battery protection on a fridge. If you can get around it, by all means you can do that with the Nomad. Uh, it doesn't require that protection on the Nomad. So that's what it doesn't take into account. Your fridge uh, doesn't take this into account. Well, how do you get around it? If you've got a fridge that's cutting out 11 volt, that, quite, that happens quite often. The fridge won't uh, operate under 11 volt sometimes. And the simplest way to get around it is just to use a uh, inverter like this, pocket inverter, about $50, $50 uh, from uh, any of the retailers. And you can plug your AC-DC charger into this inverter. And then it's the same as you plug in your adapter into the wall of the house. The fridge, from, from its perspective, it says, well, I've got all the power I need, you know, I've got 240 going through my adapter, which it comes with your fridge, and you plug this into your Nomad, and I know that that fridge there, for example, will only draw about five amp, the Nomad's allowed to give me 10 out of each port, 20 out of the Anderson, and this will give me 10 or 11 amp out of the, um, uh, the inverter. So I'll just plug that straight into the Nomad, I'll run the Nomad dead flat, and then I'll get everything out of the Nomad, and the fridge is happy. That's the way you get around it, it's the simplest, quickest, and easiest way, plus the inverter you can use for, uh, for charging things like your uh, 18 volt, 12 volt batteries for your cordless drills and all those things. So very, very handy product to have, and it's the easiest way to get around that fridge, stopping, stop working in say 10.6. The other thing that's very important to talk about is when you're off ridding uh, free camping or you're actually out doing your, uh, uh, any camping, is that typically your power source, you should be cycling it. So you're going to be running a DC-DC, uh, full dual setup in your car, or you've got a solar blanket, solar panel, and when you get to campsite, you've got a solar panel out there. So typically, I would quite happily run, and have done, and still do have a 60 amp hour one of these. And every night at, say, five, six o'clock, whenever it starts to, to get dark, the Nomad's completely full. It can only be full, and it can't get more full. So what happens is the fridge runs on the Nomad all night, and in the morning I get up, it's probably about 11.9 volt, I've got my solar panel there, and it charges up. So the battery is continually cycling. I'm not trying to, to take the battery out and go, okay, it's fully charged, I'm gonna camp until the battery's completely dead, I want it to see as long as it can run. 
No one really does that because you don't want the battery to run out. So what will the battery do? The questions that people ask, most common questions, how long will the Nomad run my fridge? The manufacturers can't tell you and I can't tell you. What temperature you've got the fridge set at? Is it minus 15, minus 10, minus five? What's the ambient temperature? How often do you open the lid? Uh, also, what is the food warm when you put it in or is it cold? And that was it being run as a fridge, fridge freezer or half fridge, fridge freezer? And what size is it? 60 litre, 80, 90? There's a million questions that need to be answered. What you need to look at is to look at the fridge and look at what it typically draws at a certain temperature. It'll be an average, it won't be specific and perfect. It's the same as looking at curves and all those types of things on the battery. It doesn't really mean anything because it can't take into effect what you're doing with the fridge. So what are you doing with the fridge? So don't ask what the Nomad can do and how long your fridge Ask what are you going to use it for and how are you going to use it and where are you going to use it? That's the first question you've got to ask is what am I going to use it for and what temperature am I going to have it set at? If that's set at minus 15 and you're running it uh, up in the tropics and you're running it at minus 15 as a freezer, you'll need, need, need to charge this continually. You'll need to probably put in a 10 or 15 amp, 20 amp charge when you're driving and then run it through a 100 watt panel to try and keep up with the, the fridge drawing. Depending on how big the fridge is, you might have a 90 or 100 litre freezer, that's fine, but you just gotta remember if it's pulling 10 amp consistently out to maintain freeze, you got 80 amp hours. Well, that's going to be eight hours at 10 amp. So you're going to have to put in the amount of amperage to cover that. It's as simple as that. You've got to work out mathematically what you're doing to work out how the best to get out of the Nomad. I typically would never just run down in a camping environment. I think the lowest I've ever got this is probably about 11, maybe, because I'm going to be charging my DC when I'm driving to the campsite, and then I've got a solar blanket out there. It doesn't matter if it's overcast, you're still going to get some amperage that goes in there. The fridge is cold, the temperature is already sitting, you know, sitting when I get to the campsite, it's already cold. Um, it's cold, so it's going to be thermostat cut in and out. I could run the fridge from the vehicle until I get to the campsite while that's being fully charged. You know, there's, there's questions that you have to ask yourself about how you're going to run your fridge uh, to get the most out of it. But again, the simplest way to run your fridge, com complete, uh, if you want to run the Nomad right down to, to 8.8 .8 and have this cut out and go black screen, is to put one of the inverters in, Plug the uh, adapter that you've got with your fridge um, that you'd normally plug in at the campsite, plug it into the inverter, you trick the fridge, runs perfectly, and for the sake of 50 bucks, it does so many other things as well. That's the simplest way to get around your fridge having a, a range that's only going to cut out at, say, 10.6 or 11 volt. Some of the fridges that you'll get will run down to 9 volts, some of the more expensive ones will. Um, however, the fridge is typically like some of the high voltage. You can go to the other extreme, you can buy a life PO4. We do have a Life uh, 4 product, about twice as expensive, it's a high voltage range, 100% um, DOD, but again, what is the advantage of doing that? If you understand what you're using your fridge for, and how to use it and get the most out of it by cycling your battery, you can save yourself money, but by all means, if you want to go to Life PO 4, you can get a voltage range of 14.8 down to 10.5. 10.5 volt though, uh, you know, 100% DOD, you're still going to run the a fridge that's going to cut out at 11 and a bit uh, voltage anyway. So, to get the most out of your Nomad uh, with your lithium, remember it doesn't have the issues of the AGM Linus and Gel running down to 50% or 45 You can run them down to 80 or of the Life PO4, you can run it down to 100%. So I hope that answers your question about the fridges and the relationship to a power source. Remember the power source is a dumb device. It provides power, okay? It comes down to the smart device, which is what's the fridge gonna do? How does it work with what sort of current and voltage and amperage and so on? And that's typically what you'll get 10.6, 11 volt is a very common cutout uh, with some of the fridges and what you'll need to do is put a pocket inverter into the Nomad, plug your 240 in, you'll get another day, a day and a half, whatever out of it, uh, and you run the Nomad dead flat. Uh, I again, like I said, if you're running in a proper, typical off-grid environment, you wouldn't run the Nomad flat anyway because you'd be cycling it. If you've got any technical questions, no, uh, to uh, contact at nomadpdu.com, you know if it's a commercial nature, we can get, um, we can get you the, the charge curves and things like that. There's absolutely no advantage because it'll only be a, a, a very rough guide because we don't know how you're going to be using a fridge, what temperature uh, you're going to be set at, and we don't know the ambient temperature, we don't know the, what the, what the, how, how full the fridge is going to be. Look, there's so many variants, how long's a piece of string. So what are you going to use it for? How much draw am I pulling from the Nomad? If I'm pulling one amp an hour and I've got 80 amp hour, that means I've got 80 hours that I can use a Nomad drawing one amp. Does your fridge draw one amp or less an hour on average? You'll be able to get that from the spec. It'll tell you, it'll be an average because it doesn't take, it's got to take into account the amperage temperature. That might be 50 degrees or 30 degrees externally. 
that will make a difference. So again, set it on low, if you've got low, medium, high setting, or economical, and if you change between modes, just be aware, sometimes you've got to leave the fridge for five or 10 minutes, uh, and then to, to actually have it reset, that's typically what happens. And again, we can't stress enough, read the manual on your fridge, because the answers to all the questions typically that we get are in the manual of the fridge, and we don't make fridges. So we're providing power as a, as a dumb provider, to a, a smart device which is like your fridge. So contact at nomadpdu.com.au if you've got any other questions and I'm sure we'll, we'll talk again soon on another topic. But uh, you know, hopefully that uh, answers some of the myth to it. But yes, you can get everything out of Nomad with your current fridge. Just run an inverter, simple as that. So we'll talk again soon. Thanks for joining.